Here, I'm starting, I'm starting to record right now. So again, just to repeat, uh, we're having a, I'm not gonna repeat the entire thing I said, but just the basics. There's gonna be a test, I'll send it out tonight. Uh, you'll have a week to work on it. You can use any course resources and you could also use a calculator or Wolfram Alpha or Excel, Excel's fine as well. I'm just asking you to not work with each other on it. I'm asking you to not like go, you know, uh, you know, searching the depths of the internet to try to find <laughs> help on the problems. Just do it out of your mind and use, you know, computational resources like calculators and Wolfram Alpha. And the content would be all things number theory and all things probability. Those would be the two main things I'm testing. Okay. So number theory, again, Euclidean algorithm for finding GCDs, uh, Fermat's little theorem for finding remainders, you know, modular arithmetic, and then the RSA method, encryption, decryption, would all be, all be things I would expect you to be able to handle. And of course, by tonight, you'll actually see the problem, so you'll know exactly what I'm going to be asking, but you'll have one week to work on that. All right, questions. What questions do you have? I had a question about um, one of the examples you did in the lecture. Oh, okay. So I'm just kind of clarifying uh, the example you did with the six color die. Yeah. And then you had like A, B, C, D, E. Yep. Um, I just want to clarify the answers for A, B, and C because you kind of said them all together. I wasn't quite sure which one went where, or I just wasn't paying attention enough. <laughs> okay. Like I just, it just lost me. Okay. So, uh, so remind me what the question was again. Um, it was this six color die. I, I didn't screenshot that. I probably should have. Let me pull up YouTube though. I'll give you I got it. It was, there's six different dice and the only thing of interest was the number of them that show one. Oh, yeah. Okay, here, let me, let me join the session again with my iPad. Okay, so say that again. Was that you, Ryan, that said that? That was me. Aiden, oh. sorry. Hey, Aiden. How's it going? It's going. Hey, there's actually a chance that I still have this thing in here. Let me see. It was this one right here, right? Yeah. Um. Is that right? Is that right, Adam? Yeah, I'm just trying to find, you know, um, which one was A, B, and C, but I can't pull sides for some reason. I think there was only two problems. Wasn't there only two? Um, where is it? Give me a minute while I'm trying to, trying to find it. Okay. I think the two questions were, what's the probability that all of them are ones? And like, what was the probability that there were three ones or something? But maybe I'm wrong about that. No, that's what it was. Okay. Okay. So, so you see, if I, if I sort of, if I record that as the number of ones that were rolled among those six die, is it, is it clear to you that that's just, uh, I'm just performing six independent experiments, right? Yeah. I got the last two parts, but there's an ABC that kind of got mixed together for me. I'm trying to. 
tell you what exactly they were. Oh, okay. Yeah. Is it in YouTube. the space? Let me see. Here we go. Okay, there's the lecture. Wow, YouTube was being really dumb and just would not find you. <laughs> well, I, there is a professional wrestler apparently named Emmett as well. So that well, I mean, my YouTube was being really dumb. Like I type in Adam Hammett, and it gave me absolutely nothing to do with any Adam Hammett whatsoever. So I don't know <laughs> what was happening okay. there. But okay, so so are you finding it? All right, yeah. So stay on your video about thirty-three minutes and fifty-two seconds in. You have A, B, C, D, E. A, B, C, D, E. In the world. Okay, so, all right, I'm gonna have to go look. Hang on a sec. Thirty-three. What? Uh, fifty-two. That's one frame of that, yeah. Oh. Okay, so so right, ABC are just like basically setting up the problem, right? Right. I just wanted to know what was the actual answer to each one, like which part. So the appropriate X would be um, X equals a uh, number of dice that show one. Yeah, that's sure. right. And then B is just zero through six. Zero through six, right? And C would just be a binomial with N equaling six and P equaling one six. That's exactly right. Yeah. All right. Just want to make sure I got this right. And Thank then you. the other two were just, and then you, and then we just recap mm -hmm. those probabilities in terms of X, right? Right. And then, yeah. D was uh, one over six to the sixth. Uh, one over six to the six, and then E was six choose three times. 536 to the third. Yeah, and you know where 536 came from because the powers on the success and failure were both three in that case. So I could just. Right, so you can multiply them together. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yeah, that's right. So there's that. Great. So is the YouTube thing kind of working out all right for you guys? Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully. There were some people that were kind of complaining about uh, about Ensemble Anthem that it was kind of glitchy at times. So, yeah. For the test, is it fine if we leave our answers like unsimplified like you have on your iPad right there? Just with... Yeah, that. yeah, yeah, that's fine. I think there will probably be uh, some examples where, or some problems where that won't make a whole lot of sense to do that. Um, like, you'll actually need to compute it. Um, you know, <laughs> but there are there will be some examples that involve counting and things like that where it will make sense for you to leave it that way. All right. Other questions, what else? Uh, when you say three dice show one, does that mean like exactly three or just three? So, so, say again, say again. Uh, when you say uh, three dice have a one, is that just, uh, is that exactly three? Or is that just three? Oh, uh, yeah, so, uh, Find the probability that three dice show a one. Yeah, yeah, uh, I think I mean exactly three right there, yes. Uh, if, I wanted, if I wanted to ask a, you know, for like thinking of maybe as like something like at least three or something, right? Is that, is that kind of what you're thinking? Yeah, yeah. So at least three, would mean that I would need to take uh, not only this one, but four and five and six and add them all together. But I, but I think I just meant exactly three in that case. Okay. 
And by the way, uh, what if I would have asked for, I had a question about the, uh, okay, okay. Uh, Rachel's asking me a question about Poisson and I'll, I'll, uh, I'll deal with that in just a second. So what if I would have asked for the probability that, uh, okay, so let me, let me do this real quick. What if I would have asked for the probability that X was greater than three? You guys can see this, right? Yeah. If I wanted the probability that that X was greater than or equal to three, what would I have done? Well, you guys know, okay, so the probability of at least three threes, that would be like one minus the probability of what? X is less than three. Yeah, X is less than three, which means X is less than or equal. In this case, that means X is less than or probability of X less than or equal to two. And then XL, XL can actually handle that. I mean, you just go equals one minus, and again, in Excel, you actually have access to all these different distributions. What distribution was this? What distribution were we dealing with in this? Bi binomial. Right, so we would type bi binomial, and you see binomial distribution right here. I double click on that. It says, okay, how many successes do you want? Well, in this problem, we, we want up to two. Does that make sense? Okay, so you go two. What's the probability of success or number of trials? How many trials were we doing total? What was our number of trials? Uh, one. No. Six. Six. What was the probability of success? One sixth. Okay, and then this last, this last parameter that you have to pass into this function is one that's asking whether I want to add all the probabilities up to this point or just take the probability of being equal to that thing. Does that make sense? So it's saying, do you want me to accumulate everything up to this? Or do you want it, do you want just the probability of this number exactly, the number two? So what do I want? Do I want cumulative or do I want just the individual probability in this case? You want cumulative. Yeah. So you would go one like that and boom. That that would be the probability that Josh was asking about. Why was it one minus in that case? Well, because, okay, so cumulative, the way that the cumulative, the cumulative thing is, it, it adds everything up to that point. How would I do that for probability of X being equal to or greater than three? It would be everything less than three. But, uh, right, but everything less than three in this case just means less than or equal to two. Does that make sense? Okay, so it's one minus that. Uh, one minus, right, right, right. So I didn't I say that? Didn't I do that down here? Yeah, yeah, I see it now. I just I missed it. Yeah, one minus. Does that make sense? What What if I just wanted the probability that x was equal to three, like I had here? Okay, what would that be equal to? So equals. What would I type? I would type binomial. Number of successes, how many successes do I want here? Three. How many trials? Six. Probably success is a sixth. And this time, I don't want everything up to and including three. I just want three. So what, what would be the, what would be the, uh, the Boolean value I would pass in? Zero. Yeah, false. So that's what that probability is. So, and by the way, you could, you could have also, this should be the same as going, you can actually do, like if you do combin, like th this is a combination, 
Remember the answer that we came up with was, so combination six, three, and then what did we multiply it by? Wasn't it five over 36, all raised to the third power or something? Yeah, that's what we had. And boom, it's the same thing, right? Okay, so, uh, so Excel is a pretty useful tool to help us compute these things. Does that make sense? That's just me kind of riffing on what Josh was asking about. If they would have asked for greater than or equal to three, I, I still, you know, I could have done it. Uh, but I think uh, the way that what question was worded, it was just exactly equal to three that mattered. Hey, Rachel asked a question. Let me see. I had a question about the Poisson distribution that you did with Excel. Could you demonstrate how you would have done that by hand? Would you just apply the equation to 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4 and add the probabilities? The answer is yes. Okay. So, uh, and I, and I can actually do that in Excel. Uh, I, I did it in Excel, right? Okay, so what, what was it again? Can someone remind me? Actually, I think I have it on my, I, I still have it on my screen here. Let me get it. Um, as a matter of fact, yeah, so let me see. Okay, so here, let me share this. Uh, here, I, I want to address this. So nine eight, okay, so nine eight four four six zero. Oh. Uh, eight four five three. Okay, so here I'm gonna I'm gonna share this. Okay, so I had this Poisson uh, with lambda equal to two, right? And I had I wanted the probability that x was greater than four. And then I had another Poisson where lambda was four, and I wanted the probability that that was greater than four. Okay. And, uh, and I think I might still have that in this. Well, let me see. I might still have it in here. Yes, I do. Okay. So let me, let me go ahead and share that. Okay, can you guys see this? This is what I had in the in the uh, lecture. So X was Poisson. That capital L is supposed to be a lambda, which is the average number of observations. Is it clear to you guys that the probability that I have greater than four observations is just one minus the probability of at most four observations? Is that clear? Okay. And then I did this in here. So, so what Rachel is asking about is, what would you have done? What would you have done in the case uh, where, where you had to just do it by hand? Well, you would go like this. You would go equals one minus, well, the first thing I would need to do is subtract the probability, right? So uh, let, me, let me write this up here, first of all. Okay, so this is equal to one minus, uh, or equals one minus the probability of zero minus the probability of one minus the probability of two minus the probability of three minus the probability of four, right? So that's kind of the, the formula that you would use. You would just have to take one minus all of those individual probabilities. Does that make sense? So look, you can go equals one minus, what was the, do you guys, what was the formula? Do you remember? 
let me just let me write down the formula for what the probability was probability that x was equal to k is going to be equal to uh, l to it, it would be 2 to the k right it was lambda to the k over k factorial okay uh, oh shoot all of that right all of that times e raised to the uh e to the minus lambda so it would be minus two okay that's like the that's the general formula for the probability of being equal to anything does that make sense yeah the nice thing about the poisson is that all of the probabilities have this factor of e to the minus lambda all of the probabilities have this factor of e to the minus lambda so when i have to add a bunch of them together what can i always factor out what am i always going to be able to factor out if i add a bunch of them together what can i always factor out e to the minus lambda yeah so this is going to be equal to one minus i think okay expo exponential to the negative two times, okay, now I need to add a bunch of things together. It's gonna to be two to the zero, right? Two to the zero divided by, divided by zero factorial. Well, that's, that's stupid, that's just one, right? Let me just leave that. In fact, this whole thing is just one, but you know, I'll just put a one down here plus What's two to the one? Because because I, I have also have to do the probability of one. It's going to be two to the one over one over one factorial, which is one, plus two to the two over two factorial, which is two, plus two to the three over three factorial. What's three factorial? Six. Yeah. Plus two to the fourth over four factorial, what's four factorial? Four factorial is four times six, which is? 24. Yeah. Okay, so this should give, give me the same number I got before, right? 0 0.052, whatever, okay? Boom, there it is, right? It's exact same, exact same. Okay, Does that makes sense, Rachel? Hopefully. Yeah. I think in the next, in my next lecture, I am going to, I'll, I'll take a few minutes to describe what the variance is telling you precisely and how one would compute it. But for the purposes of this class, I'm not gonna go into like tons of detail. I just want you to have an idea of what the variance is doing and, and what you would do to compute it if you really wanted to. Um, but I'm not going to go, you know, deeply into like the theoretical underpinnings of, of uh, you know, variance computation or anything. But I think it's it's good for you to at least know what it what it's doing. Basically, basically what it's doing is the mean is like a one number summary for all the data. Yes, it's like the one number I would hand you if I wanted to say this is how the data behaves. But the variance goes a step further. The variance says, okay that you have your one number summary, but this number actually tells you how much the data tends to deviate away from the mean. Is it really like humped up close to the mean or is it really spread out? If the data is really spread out, the variance is gonna be big. If the, if the data is all humped up around the mean like this, then the variance is gonna be small, okay? A variance of zero means that there's really no randomness at all. Everything's just the same number every time. <laughs> okay. So I will spend a couple of minutes talking about that just because, uh, you know, we're using it in our computation. So it would be nice to at least know what it is. Okay. Other questions? What else? What else?
by the way, I, I sent those, um, the, I put the slides on Canvas for chapter four. There's a bunch of slides I kind of hit that are hidden. It, I don't know if, did you guys notice that? I, I don't know if some of you have noticed that. There's a whole bunch of slides that are hidden. Don't worry about like content on those. That was just stuff that I was like thinking about using potentially that I didn't end up using. So anytime I post slides where you have hidden, hidden slides, just don't worry about it, okay? Uh, I mean, you could go learn about it if you want, but I'm not gonna hold you responsible for that. Well, what else? Well, I guess we could call it a day. I'll go ahead and send, I'll send that thing out. Uh, you know, probably, it probably won't be very late tonight, more like evening. Uh, I just wanna, I wanna make sure that uh, the wording is exactly the way I want it to be, but um, it should all be ready to go here pretty quick. Again, it, it will probably take one and a half hours to complete on the upper end, but I, I wouldn't be surprised if some people are able to finish it in less time than that. But I mean, that doesn't mean you have to finish it in that amount of time. You just have a week to finish it. But I wouldn't wait till like, you know, four o'clock next Wednesday to start working on it or something. That would really put yourself in a pretty bad position. But um, but yeah, uh, you'll have a week to work on it, plan for you know just a couple hours of work. And, uh, and you can use lots of resources, just don't use each other. And don't be like Google searching uh, certain things. Just, <laughs> just use it for, use Wolfram Alpha, use your calculator. And you can use Excel as well, okay? So that's kind of what I'm restricting, restricting your computer usage to. Wolfram Alpha, calculator that, and also like any content that I put up for the uh, class, that kind of stuff is, is uh, freely available to you as well, okay? All right, well, I don't really have anything else to say. Thank you, guys. Thank you. All right. See ya.